That's when we got in a horrific car accident. I was so scared that I was gonna be paralyzed. I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't walk, I can't move. I was in a lot of pain. I kept telling myself like, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna get through this. Positive self-talk and believing in yourself is so powerful. It doesn't mean that you have to remain stuck in that fear. You can overcome more than you think. You have to see the glimmers of the positive things that have happened. Are you crying? Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> it's the first time. I think when you're finally at peace with that, you're able to be okay with who you are. I'm curious to know, is there anything else about your journey that you wanna share with me? I've endured a lot in life. That one was too far. What do you think was a impactful part of your childhood that shaped who you are today? Yeah, I, I can think of like two significant moments that really shifted my whole life. When I was uh, 17 or 18, I actually didn't get to go to my own prom. So I was invited to another prom and that was really special to me because my senior year was really hard for me and I was actually, I had a lot of friends and then something happened with my relationship that affected me where I was alone a lot. And so that's why I never got to go to my prom. And so that was really hurtful for me. So when I was invited to the following year, I was like, yeah, why not? And it was very special. And then, but afterwards, um, there was a little bit of a disagreement with my friend's boyfriend. He was a little jealous. Um, so he left angry. And since we were all in the car together, a part of me, I guess you can say it was my intuition. I felt like it wasn't right for uh, me to leave with him but I just ignored it and like like not safe yeah I didn't feel like it was safe because he felt he was so angry and he was yelling and I was like can you please like you know calm down and he was just like really aggressive and that should have been like a red flag for me with his words like yeah not towards me but towards the girlfriend yeah, uh, my just friend a really aggressive yeah energy. he was he was jealous oh. um and so that's why we had to leave early and the whole experience kind of shifted because he started driving really fast and that's when we got in a horrific car accident oh. and the car spun multiple times and then it hit a pole and i just uh, i just remember like feeling so shaken like when is this gonna stop and it, when it finally did it was like <gasps> like shocking, like I can't just, I can't believe I just lived through this. And so everyone got out of the car except me. And that was the hardest part for me is because I was so scared that I was gonna be paralyzed. Um, and yeah, that was, that was a really hard time. Like everyone got out and they had to pull me out. And- You were injured? Yeah, I was injured. I. I ended up breaking my lower lumbar and fracturing my ribs and I had a concussion. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Yeah, so I was on the ground and my date, I remember at the time, was like, Kim, Kimberly, like he was asking me all these questions because they told him to keep asking me questions. I just wanted to close my eyes at that moment. I just wanted to just kind of forget about everything. Did um, it, they did didn't let like me closing your eyes to go to sleep or yeah like I wanted to your... rest oh, like wow. I was so like it was very traumatic and <laughs> yeah. so for me to just like rest and forget about everything I just I, I was I was in a lot of pain too and I was shocked because I was shocked because I couldn't move I was shocked because you know what had just happened um and so I just remember looking at the sky and saying a little prayer and then, um, and the next thing you know, we're going to the hospital. And so. In an ambulance? Yeah, ambulance. We went to the hospital. And I was there for a few days. Um, and it was, it was very difficult for me because a part of me felt very grateful that I was alive. But then the other part of me was grieving because I... I was completely overwhelmed with my whole life. Like, I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't walk, I can't move. I was in a lot of pain. My bones kept cracking. Um, like re-breaking? I don't, I don't know. I just like, every time I moved, oh. it, 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 it hurt. So, and like I said, I had those injuries. So the doctor did tell me, he's, he, he's like, we're, we're gonna wait to see if you're able to like, see how you transition, move. And so I was, able to move and 
I was I was praying a lot actually, and I was prayers what is what kept me like hopeful to move forward. Yeah. So every step I took, I was like. I was moving very slowly because obviously, um, but I made an effort and I'm like, I can do this. I can get through this. And so that gave me a little bit of hope. But now fast forward a couple of days, they're ready to release me. How many and, days were you in the hospital? Um, probably like four or five. Wow. Yeah. They're, so they released me. And um, that was a very, very hard part for me because... I was so terrified, terrified to go back in the car thinking like, what if another car accident happens to me? Yeah, what if I get course. hurt? Like, what if they're driving too fast? And um, I did have a lot of trauma symptoms. For example, I just wanted to avoid a car. I It took me a long time to finally get to where I was and drive and even drive near downtown where the car accident was because I was so scared. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot of nightmares, so I would wake up in a panic and had a lot of flashbacks. Um, so severe trauma. Yeah. yeah. And then um, it, even if I heard like a car breaking, I would cry thinking like, what if they're in a car accident? Mm. I was really worried about them. Um, so that was my experience. And then when I went back home, um, I did get a lot of visitors um, and I was so, so grateful. I felt so much love, like people that I didn't even talk to more like acquaintances um or church people they were showering me with so much love like cookies and <laughs> they would bring cards and just i i it was so unexpected and a part of me felt guilty because when i was in the hospital the person near next to me actually said you're so lucky you're getting all these visitors i don't even get any and that just made me realize like how fortunate i was in that moment like to have that community that I didn't even expect so wow but when I go back to when I go back home um I am I'm having a lot of internal struggles um as well as external struggles dealing with like the trauma symptoms but also with feeling a lot of sense of loss because going from two jobs and you know, going to school to not doing anything. Not even being able to walk very well. Yeah. yeah. And I was in a lot of pain. Like I also came back um, from the hospital with like phlegms. I was sick. And because my ribs were, uh, you know, fractured, <clears throat> every time I coughed, <clears throat> it would really hurt me a lot. And I could hear like my bones kind of like make that noise, that crackle. Um so that was really difficult for me and an adjustment. So a lot of the time I did spend sleeping. I just wanted to rest because the sun, the sunlight, when you have a concussion, like the, you get a lot of migraines. So I just wanted to be in a dark room and just have no visitors sometimes. Mm -hmm. I remember there was this one time where this lady, um, this lady from church came to visit me and she offered to pray and at that time, um, and of course, everybody has their own cultural beliefs. Some people believe in different things, manifestations or Buddha or whatever their cultural practices, which I totally respect. But in this in this experience, they actually prayed for me and I was completely moved because I was in a lot of pain. I was tired of feeling like I was bedridden, like I couldn't move and I couldn't do much because when I did move, it hurt. And I walked like a little granny, like <laughs> walking so slow. And so when they prayed for me, I said a prayer and I, I closed my eyes and I said, I'm just, I'm asking for like full healing. And I visualized myself walking, which is kind of crazy, but like I imagined it. I visualized it. I'm like, I'm going to walk. Please heal me. It's going to happen. Like I was so hopeful. Like I had so much faith and I'm not even lying to you. Like after that prayer, like I started like walking again. And some people might think like, oh, that's fake. That's not true. But oh, that was real. that was real like for me. Like That's amazing. I, I started walking again and I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I was so excited. Like, ah. Had you pr like, were you, was your prayer life strong before then? Or was that um, your first time? It wasn't really praying? like as strong. Like I grew up Catholic and then my parents became Christian. And at that point, I felt like I've had like some moments in my life where I wasn't really close to God. But at that time, I, I started to pray more. I think in my brokenness, I felt like more closer to God, sure. which is, you know, my journey. <laughs> 
so yeah that was that was really healing for me um it, it embar- embarked a, a moment of like faith and awakening and just like wanting to to help others too um that's and- a blessing to have a direct <laughs> yeah. answered prayer like that yeah you know? a yeah. lot of people might get it in bits and pieces but to pray and have a yeah. direct answer that kind of shapes your spirituality the rest of your life yeah. I mean, you can't really unsee that <laughs> yeah and i never actually have shared this publicly because I've only shared it like with people in the church community. I was always scared of like, what will people say? What will people think of me? But honestly, I'm at the point in my life where I don't care. <laughs> hey, Vibe community, don't leave. Give me under 10 seconds here. If you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel so I can continue to get awesome guests like the one you're watching. Enjoy. When I finally got the courage to drive, it was it was powerful like ah, I'm on the streets again like yeah. it was scary though it took a long time but I kept telling myself like it's gonna be okay I'm gonna get through this and that positive self-talk and believing in yourself is so powerful because that's not something that I've always had especially when you're scared when you allow fear to come in or past traumas but just because you go through those experiences, it doesn't mean that you have to remain stuck in that fear. Like you can overcome more than you think. I also started struggling with insomnia. And if you know with insomnia, you know, when you're not getting sufficient enough sleep, like that also can um, have, you That's have a higher good. risk for suicidal thoughts or suicidal attempts. Um, and that is where it really got to me because I was, I was, I was really in a dark place in my life where it would be 12 p.m., 2 p.m., and I was still up. Imagine being like that for several days. And you're already depressed and <laughs> severe trauma. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, and so that was really a hard place for me because there was a time where I was just like, at this point in my life, I felt like I kind of had kind of fell off my beliefs in God. Like, I was like, are you even there? Like, yeah. do you even exist? And I remember crying that night and I, I just, there was a night where I like, I didn't want to, I was going to un- unalive myself. And, um, I was crying and I, I even said a prayer. I'm like, God, if you really exist, like do something. Right. And I was still living with my parents at that time. And I think it was two in the morning when my mom came in and she's like, I had, you know, I had a dream that you're not doing well. And so I woke up and she checked on me. And I was like, I was shocked because I did not expect that. Like, I was like, whoa. Another directly answered yeah. prayer. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what I want people to know is like, you're going to go through hardships. You're going to go through challenges. You're going to go through doubts and even fears and even times where you're like questioning yourself. But I want you to remain hopeful because there, if you have life, there's hope you have to see the glimmers of you know the positive things that have happened are you crying sorry, it's okay it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first time that's ever happened on this show. <laughs> really yeah thank you for sharing oh yeah. you're so sweet i i'm curious to know is there anything else about your journey that you want to share with me as far as my life journey yeah just... like what are your um what are your like what are your beliefs? <laughs> hmm. That's a good question. So I'm kind of finding that. Um, when I went through, I shared the cancer thing with my mm-hmm. daughter. I, I, I've, I've endured a lot in life. Um, yeah. And that one was too far. And I mm-hmm. just said, okay, I, I understand this is your plan. Or if, I, I don't know how this works, but yeah. everybody's saying, hey, it's God's plan, God's plan. Well, I'm out. I've already, I've, yeah. I've done a lot of that in my life that this is for the good and it's mm-hmm. God's plan a lot of a lot of interesting chapters but yeah. it, when it was with my daughter and there's nothing I can do I became very angry and so yeah, that makes sense since I pretty much walked that relationship but since then there's been coincidences if you will and signs and a path opening up for me to make a relationship with God again. And I've mm-hmm. been praying again and I don't have a specific religious belief system anymore, yeah. but I do connect with God that's, and I do pray and I am important. receiving answers to those prayers through coincidences or through yeah. signs or people coming into my life and uh-huh. sharing things that yeah. change my perspective. And there's things that I've, uh, wrestled with wrestled with internally that I've been given peace on 
And there's no way that could have happened without yeah. without the God doing that. Even this show, I like I, I started this show to push kindness and empathy. And it's also practice for me because I was not that person. I wasn't mm-hmm. like a mean person, but I was very grumpy and moody. And my first my my thinking was very negative my whole life. It's been mm-hmm. pessimistic and glasses half full and everybody's out to get me, so I'm gonna strike first and hey, in business, mm-hmm. it's my $5 or his, who's going to negotiate better? And now, after all this, I'm really focusing on, hey, everybody's connected. Yeah. One bad interaction can impact thousands, if not millions of people, or one good interaction. Yeah, That's it has all a little on. ripple effect. Exactly. Yeah. So my focus is finding a direct connection and relationship with God and mm-hmm. then being kind to people and it's a daily practice i want to be very clear that i'm glad i have this opportunity thanks for asking but i am not perfect at this but i do always apologize when i fall short i appreciate that you were being so honest and real about like your life journey and like where you are now and how you've transitioned appreciate it thanks for watching you guys if you like that great episode check out this one another great one click Click right here. Please comment, like, subscribe. It really helps these videos get more traction and we can push out more positivity. Thank you so much.